Hi everyone, I'm Zhao Xin, and the topic of our paper is A-star plus BFA tries, a hybrid heuristic search algorithm. The A-star is used by many state-of-the-art optimal track planners. The advantage of A-star is that it detects audio picking nodes. However, A-star can fill up 8, 8 GB of memory in a few minutes on common heuristic search and planning domains. IDA star, on the other hand, only stores nodes on a current path. However, IDA star may generate too many duplicate nodes on domains containing a lot of short cycles. So this comparison motivates our research. In this paper, we propose a new hybrid heuristic search algorithm for solving problems that cannot be solved by A star due to memory limitations. Now IDA star due to the existence of many short cycles. So our new algorithm is based on A star and the breast first heuristic search. So here we first briefly introduce what is breast first heuristic search. So BFHS stores fewer nodes than A star while still detecting duplicate nodes. There are three features of BFHS. The first is that BFHS expands nodes in breast first order while A star expands nodes in a best first order. Second, BFHS takes a user specified upper bound U and prunes a node whose F value is greater than U. And also the third feature is that BFHS removes closed nodes from memory whenever it is possible. So here, this is an example of how BFHS works. We have our start node S and the numbers in the nodes are F values. So here, Assume we know the optimal solution cost uh, uh, C star is four in advance. And then we are going to call BFHS with the upper bound U equal to four. So here we first expand node S and we generate node A and B. Both have an F value of three, which is within the bound. So we save A and B in our memory. And then we are going to expand node A. A generates node C and D. C has an F value of three within the bound, so we keep it. However, D has an F value of five, which is greater than the upper bound four. So we remove it from our memory. And then we expand node B. B also generates node D. Since it's above the bound, it is immediately pruned. And then B also generates node E. E also has an F value of three within the bound. So we keep node C and E in our memory. As a result, after we have finished expanding nodes at depth of one, we have nodes C and E as the nodes at depth two. And then we remove nodes A and B from our memory. Then in the next, we are going to expand node at depth two. So we first expand C, we generate F, H, and I. F and H have an F value of five greater than our bound. So we remove them from our memory. Uh, node I has an F value of four equal to the upper bound, so we keep it. Then we expand node E. We also generate node I again. Since BFHS performs duplicate detection, we know this is a copy, a second copy of node I. And uh, E also generate node J and K. J and K also have an F value of five greater than the bound. So we also remove J and K from our memory. And as a result, at the end, we only store node I as the nodes at depth three. And then we are going to delete nodes at the depth two from our memory, which means we remove nodes C and E from our memory. And then finally, we expand node I, we generate node G, which is a goal node, and now we have found the goal. So this is basically how BFHS works. However, the problem of BFHS is that C star is not known in advance. As a result, the solution borrows, from, borrows the idea of IDE star. So we run a series of BFHS iterations from the start node. Well, each iteration has a different cost bound. So the first bound is the heuristic value of the start node, and the last bound will be the optimal solution cost, C star. And similar to IDA star, BF IDA star also generates most nodes in the last iteration. So as a summary, compared to A star, BF IDA star is always slower, but it requires less memory. As a result, if we have a very hard problem that A star cannot solve with a given memory limitation, we may try to use BF at A star. And then this is our algorithm A star plus BFHS. It has two phases. In the first phase, we will run A star until a user specified storage threshold is reached. 
For example, we can allocate one GB of memory for the A star phase. And uh, after we have run out of memory for the A star phase, uh, then we switch to our second phase, which here we run a series of BFHS iterations below the frontier nodes. Here we define the frontier nodes as the open nodes at the end of the A star phase. So here, this is an example about our algorithm. Here we have all the nodes that's generated at the end of the A star phase. The gray nodes are the closed nodes and the white nodes are the open nodes, which are also the frontier nodes for our search. And the numbers in each node are the F values for that node. So here we can say that the minimum F value among the open nodes is six. So then when we begin our first iteration of BFHS phase, we will use the minimum map value on open as a cost bound, which is six. So one of the most important feature of our algorithm is that we fit each call to BFHS with a set of frontier nodes instead of just one node. In addition, we would call BFHS in decreasing order of depth. So here we make our first call to BFHS on the frontier nodes at depth three, which are nodes H and I here. And uh, after the call to BFHS, we either find the goal or we do not find the goal. In which case, we will update the F value of, of the frontier nodes to the minimum F value of the nodes generated but not expanded in that call to BFHS. For example, here, after the call to BFHS on the frontier nodes H and I, we will update the F value from six to seven. Here, we didn't call BFHS on the frontend nodes J and K because they have an F value of seven, which is greater than our cost of bound six. So then we make our second call to BFHS on the frontend nodes at depth two, which are nodes E and F. And we also update the F values. Then we make the third call to BFHS on the frontend nodes at depth one, which is node B. And you can see here, we also update its F value from six to eight because we do not generate the goal in that call to BFHS. And then we have first our, finished our first iteration. We do not find the goal, so we begin our second iteration. Here the cost bound is also the minimum F value on open, which you can see here is seven. And then we make our first call to BFHS on the frontier nodes at depth three, which are nodes H, I, J, and K. And then we make our second call to BFHS on the front end nodes at depth two, which are nodes E and F here. Since node B has a F value of eight, which is greater than our current cost bound seven, so we do not call BFHS on B in this iteration. So we just continue doing this until and increasing the bound until we finally find the goal node. So this is how our A star plus BFHS works. And for the experimental results, we implemented the BFID star and A star plus BFHS in fast downward. For A star plus BFHS, we first generate the heuristics, then we allocate one tenth of the remaining available memory of HGB for the A star phase. This usually corresponds to 10 to 20 million of nodes on most of problems. So we have solved around 550 problems from 32 different unit cost domains. And here we split uh, the, those 550 problems into three categories. So first, there are around 500 problems that we define as easy because they are solved in A star plus BFHS and A star phase, which means A star can solve those problems with at most eight mag, 800 megabytes. Then we also have around 30 million problems, which means A star can solve them with 800 megabytes to, eight, to at most 8 GB of memory. And also we have 22 hard problems, which means that A star cannot solve them with 8 GB of memory. So we compare our algorithm with A star and BFID A star. First, on the easy problems, uh, since it is solved in the A star phase of A star plus BFHS, then it means our algorithm is the same as A star and it is always faster than BFID A star. Uh, on the medium problems, our algorithm is slower than A star, but it requires nice memory. And what's most important is on the hard problems. Among the 22 hard problems that A star cannot solve with HTTP memory, 
A star plus BFHS solves 21 of those problems with the same HGB memory limitation. And for the comparison with BFID star, A star plus BFHS is in general better than BFID star in terms of memory and of time. For example, among the 32 hardest problems from 18 different domains, A star plus BFHS requires less memory than BFID star on 25 out of those 32 problems and is faster than BFID star on 27 out of those 32 problems. In addition, A star plus BFHS requires less than half of the memory of BFID star on 14 out of those problems and it is at least twice as fast as BFID star on 16 out of those problems. And the memory reduction, maximum memory reduction ratio is 6.7, and the maximum speed up ratio uh, is 13.8. So most of the time and memory savings come from A star plus BFHS terminating early in the last iteration. Remember that BFID star is generated the most nodes in the last iteration, while A star plus BFHS you already generate a few nodes in the last iteration due to the fact that we use a different node ordering scheme. So this is a conclusion here. We propose a hybrid algorithm for solving problems that cannot be solved by A star due to memory limitations, not ID star due to the existence of many short cycles. Compared to A star, on easy problems, A star plus BFHS is the same as A star. Uh, on the medium and hard problems, it is smaller than A star, but it requires significantly less memory. As a result, it can solve 21 more problems under the same HGPL memory limitation. Compared to BFID star, A star plus BFHS is in general better. On easy problems, it is always faster. And on medium and hard problems, A star plus BFHS reduces the search time and our memory by several times on a variety of domains. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm looking forward for any questions you have. Thank you.